Hey there, everyone. It is Thursday, September 9th, 9-9-2021. Hope your week has gone well as we finish up our preparations today, uh, looking at the readings for this upcoming Sunday. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your week as you slide into the weekend. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, Today we turn our attention to the gospel lesson. Uh, not for sure where I'm going with the sermon this week. Um, no specific reading is jumping out, so we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but this is the gospel lesson. We continue in the gospel of Mark, and here we see an incident of Jesus healing a boy with an unclean spirit. But it's a little different situation in that this is one um, where uh, the disciples, after having healed people, according to God's power, now are unable to. Uh, so a little different situation. And to put this in context, uh, this is right after the mountain of transfiguration, uh, where Jesus' glory is revealed to Peter, James, and John. Uh, he is seen on the mountain with Moses and with Elijah. Uh, and, and now he is... Uh, focused uh, to get to Jerusalem, uh, where he will ultimately suffer, die, and then rise again for the forgiveness of our sins. Uh, but here we are in Mark chapter 9. We're going to be looking at verses 14 through 29. And when they came to the disciples, they, that, that would be Jesus, Peter, James, and John, they saw a great crowd around them. And scribes arguing with them. So you can imagine a literal mountaintop experience. They come down the mountain and they see this kind of chaos. It's obvious something is going on and something's uh, not right. Of course, the uh, scribes are, you know, causing their normal problem. And immediately, one of Mark's favorite words, all the crowd, when they saw him, Jesus, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? So obviously it was the uh, scribes and the disciples that were having this argument. And someone from the crowd answered him, Rabbi. Now, this term rabbi, I think I've mentioned this before, this term rabbi here for Jesus, um, isn't necessarily complimentary. Um, for some, uh, it's just lack of faith, lack of knowledge about who Jesus is. Uh, they just see him as one of the many wandering teachers that have groups of people following him. Uh, for others, it's almost a, a backhanded um slap in the face to Jesus, that uh, they are refusing to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They are refusing to, refusing to recognize his power. Either way, teacher, I brought my son, so this is the man, to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute, which is unable to talk. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. Kind of sounds like a, a seizure of some sort. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were unable to. See, they had been able to do this before, and now all of a sudden they couldn't. And, and as the father approaches Jesus, you can hear his desperation. You can hear his frustration. Um, and so he's coming to the man in charge. And he, Jesus, answered them, uh, not just the man, not just the disciples, but all of them and also the crowd. 
O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? I think you need to read into that uh, question, how long. Um, not only a question of time, uh, but also I think a, um, a sense of frustration. How long will it be before uh, you have faith? He continues, how long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, so we have a demonic spirit here. Sorry, I lost my place here. Um, Okay, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. He struggles. He wants to believe. He's desperate. Um, this, this term here used for compassion, uh, I think of the term gut-wrenching today, um, that, that visceral emotion that you feel it in your guts. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the idea when you hear the word compassion in the New Testament, what that means. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. You see, the power and love of God are, are constant. Uh, it's the faith, uh, although gift of God in our sinful flesh, we still struggle with it. It's the faith that receives this power and love of God. And it's the faith in us that sometimes wavers. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, and the longer I live, the more I can relate. Um, and this becomes almost my uh, mantra. I believe, help my unbelief. You see, it's not about how much faith we have, how great a faith we have. You know, we, we hear this, you, know, you hear Jesus say, if one believes and we understand that it's not the power of God who wavers, but the faith that we, we are want to say to ourselves, well, I just got to have more faith. I just got to work harder at it. Um, whatever we think will help us grow in that faith. But it's not about the faith, right? It's not about uh an analogy I've been using recently, I don't know if it's the best one, you know, you're holding on to a rope suspended high above the ground. Um, which is more important, you holding on to the rope or the strength of the rope itself? I know it's not a perfect analogy, but um, without the strong rope, our grip on it wouldn't help at all. It's ultimately about Christ and about what Christ has done for us. And my dear friends, he never wavers. That's never in question. I believe. Help my unbelief. Verse 25, And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. I don't think we can say with any certainty how many, but... Uh, I know I've had conversations with many people over the years sort of wondering um, 
the science knowledge that we have today and medical knowledge we have is just phenomenal and certainly beyond what they had. Um, I, I think, though, that we um, are unwise when we completely dismiss the work of uh, demonic activity uh, in people today. Uh, we are wont to explain everything through science, um, through some sort of medical diagnosis. Um, but the reality is, is that these demons are still active. Uh, especially if you look in mental health and some of these other areas. Uh, you have to wonder um, uh, how much these demons are still at work. And to understand that here, as Jesus will say, our greatest weapon is prayer and the power of God uh, in the world and in our lives. Let's finish out verse 28. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? I, I find it really interesting. You see this pattern right after a big event. Jesus will take his disciples aside uh, and, and speak with them more directly, uh, give them um, some more knowledge and understanding about the event. Um, boy, what a great analogy for our weekly lives, right? Um, and I know something as a pastor, I can always do better, but I strive to, is, um, you know, after the events of our week to come aside, for Jesus to draw us aside uh, into his intimate presence, um, where he instructs us, uh, as well as, of course, forgiving us uh, and renewing us. And then finally, verse 29, and he said to them, this kind of cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. I think the disciples maybe they were a little overconfident when they encountered this one. Um, you know, were they relying on themselves too much? Um, were they uh, just not prepared yet? Uh, we're not really for sure why. But after this great mountaintop transfiguration experiment that happened just before today's reading, uh, Jesus and his closest disciples come down, and what do they encounter? A defiant demon, uh, an anxious father, uh, an astonished crowd, and despairing disciples. You know, despair is something that affects each and every one of us. It, it overwhelms us. It threatens to overwhelm our faith. It, it points out how we fail and how the world around us is failing. Um, we, we are one to wonder, does God not care? Um, has he more important things to deal with? Um, but in reality, Jesus did come down from the mountain, didn't he? And he entered right into this mess, uh, right into the despair, the anxiety, uh, even the demonic work in the world. He entered right into it. He didn't linger on glory. He didn't remain re removed from it, um, but he comes into the midst of it. And he does the same for you and me today. And we cry out, we believe help our unbelief. And he does. Ultimately, through the cross and empty grave, but even now today in his word spoken to you. Let's continue. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will to comfort us in all our afflictions to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks.
let us pr bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. And if not before, we'll see each other on Sunday.